Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another video with my E65 7 series. Uh, as the title suggests, what we're going to be doing on this video is we are going to be replacing these horrible, horrible marred headlight lenses. Uh, as you can see, um, aside from the fact that there's a few dead flies on them, you can see that the plastic is really, really badly crazed and they're milky all over and they are just not letting through the light in the manner that they should. Uh, if anything, they're probably diffusing it and um, possibly even blinding other people on the road. Um, but yeah, it's it's got worse over time. These lenses have been um, polished previously to, to remove all this crazing, but given the time, it's just come back. Uh, I have seen people that um, have polished them and then uh, given them a coat of lacquer, which obviously helps. Um, I didn't lacquer them, um, but yeah, the, uh, uh, they, they, the crazing has come back uh, with a vengeance, especially around the sides here. You can see how bad it is. Um, yeah, so they're in, they're in need of replacement. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to use these. Now, these are direct replacement lenses. And as you can see, there's a significant difference between how well you can see through this and how well you can see through that. Um, Quite a lot involved in uh, in replacing these. It's not a case we're just popping them apart and uh, and, and fitting these ones. There's uh, it's, it's a bit in depth. Um, and obviously, uh, to uh, to get to the point where we can pull the headlight apart, we need to get the headlight off the car. To do that, the bumper needs to come off. Um, the bumper needs to come off just to change the angel eye bulbs uh, on this car, which is uh, a uh, you know a minor annoyance for most E65 owners, but it is what it is. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. First step. Let's get the bumper off. Right, in order to get the bumper off, there's quite a few uh, quite a few screws that need to be removed um, in order to do so. You can see a couple up here. Uh, behind these trims here with the parking sensors in and the number plate, uh, behind the grill here and also a few inside the wheel arch. So they all need to come out, so we'll do them in a fairly logical order. And what we'll do, I think, is we'll start by removing the, the trim pieces with the parking sensors in. Right, to get the trim panels off, what we're going to do is we are going to use some uh, trim removal tools. Now, obviously, if you jam a screwdriver in there, it's going to damage the paint and the plastic. So these, uh, these don't mar um, and are a lot kinder on the paint. And to get these ones off on this side, all we do is pop our tool in there. And you can see it's popped away from the bumper. And then all we need to do is just unclip it all the way along, like so. And when we get to this point, we've got to kind of pull it towards us so that this end comes out. And there we go. That is it removed. And you can see how minging it is behind. Next, we need to unplug the PDC. And there we are. That is the first trim panel removed, complete with the parking sensors. So I'll do the one on that side and then we'll look at the number plate trim. Okay, to get the middle trim panel off, the number plate does need to be removed. The reason for this is because there are some screws behind it. Um, it's held in with double-sided tape. Obviously, we need to overcome the tape. Here's the screws that I was talking about. There we are. That's the, that's the number plate removed. What I'll do later on when we reinstall is obviously clean up all of this and put some fresh tape on. But here's the two screws that we've uh, that we've uncovered. Just a screwdriver on there. These are quite rusty, so make sure your screwdriver does fit well, otherwise it'll just spin and mar up the screw heads. go okay now if we give the panel a little tug maybe a little help with the pry tool there we go that is it completely removed 
and what I'll do, I will pop the screws back into their holes and that can all go in the garage for safekeeping. Now, behind here, you can see there's a torch screw just there and there's another one there. So there's two torch screws, that's why we had to remove these trims. We won't take them off yet. What we'll do, we'll get on removing all the other bits and pieces and then we'll come back to these screws uh, last. Okay, next thing we're gonna remove is these little uh, trims on the grill. Not this middle bit, just the bits at the end. And if we get our pry tool in and give them a give them a little tug, they will pop out. There we go, that's one. Same at this side. And there we are. Now, if we look in here, there's another screw there and another screw just there. They'll obviously be com coming out as well. Um, and again, we'll pull all these torque screws out uh, last. Next thing we want to do is we want to get in under the wheel arch. Okay, inside the wheel arch liner, there's four 8 mil screws. We've got one here, one underneath. My middle finger is right on the head of it right now. There's one there, and then another one just here. Again, my finger is right on it. So all four of those need to come out. Starting with the one underneath. There's one. There's two. This probably would have been easier if I'd have turned the wheel slightly, but it'll come out. And then last is this one just up here. I probably need an extension to get into that one. So I'll go and grab an extension and we'll get that last one out. There we go. That is the last one. Okay, once, um, once all of those are out, what we need to do, just give the top of the bumper a gentle pry away because this clip here you can see which I'm pressing with my finger just clips into these if you give it a give it a little tug it just overcome it it's not that strong okay what I need to do now is obviously I need to repeat all of this on the other side of the car and then we can look at the bumper uh, mountains at the front okay now we've got all the screws removed from the uh, from the uh, wheel latches we'll start removing the bolts from the front now the uh, these two here are T25, and likewise, the four down here in the grill are also T25. These two here need to be removed as well, but they are not T25, they are T30. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna begin with the ones at the front, the T25. Loosen them all off first, and I'll come round and whip them all off after. six loose one two three Four. Six. 
five. And the last one. Six. That's the six T25s all removed. Next, we'll do the four T30s at the top. As before, I'm just going to loosen them all. Three and the last one. Four. Okay, there we are. That's the four T30s. Now we can actually pull the bumper from the car. Okay, with all the screws removed, what we can do now is pull the bumper forward. So we just need to make sure that this, where it comes up behind the headlight, uh, doesn't get caught on the bottom of the headlight, so just pull it round. Same on this side. And then we can pull the whole thing forward. Now, the only thing that hasn't been disconnected is the fog lights, so bear that in mind. Don't go trying to walk off with your, uh, with your bumper at this stage. And there we go. As you can see, there's the fog lights. Just squeeze the squeeze the connector and pull it off. Same this side. That one does not want to come off. So what I'll do, I'll go and get something to. Uh, just lever it off and then we'll uh, we'll be able to separate the bumper from the car. Oh that was that one was on there well and did not want to come off. Okay. There we are. That is the front bumper completely removed. Now as you can see here we can undo all the bolts and stuff holding the headlight into position and all of this is now no longer covered by the bumper so the headlight should come out fairly easily so what i'll do i'll go and stow the bumper somewhere safely so it doesn't get damaged and then we can move on to actual headlight removal okay so in order to remove the headlight from the car there are four eight mil screws that are holding it onto the chassis so one two three just down here next to this plastic protrusion and number four is just there so those four screws need to come out um, and then the headlight will move um, to make our lives easier this is 100% necessary but it is going to make life easier I'm just going to undo the two screws that hold the headlight washer into place as well these are t20s so yeah just just by moving that out of the way gives you a little bit more wiggle room to get the headlight out um, of its um, of its space um, because this being sticking out like it does can make the life a little bit more difficult so I'll start off by undoing the four screws one two that's the bottom one's done three and four okay next the headlight washers as I said t20 Side. There is a slot under here 
that that wire runs through so it's worth bearing that in mind when we come to when we come to put it back together that that wire does go underneath there because that's what that channel in the bottom is actually for but with the screws removed we can actually take it completely out of the way and as you can see the whole headlight now moves now what we need to do is we need to obviously disconnect all the wiring connectors on the back of the headlight um, but before I do that I'm going to go and put these screws away somewhere safe okay so now all the screws are removed we can pull the headlights forward and there's two connectors that we need to disconnect one is right here at the top which is the one for the indicators so if I just squeeze the connector together it'll pull apart and come out just like so then what we need to do is we kind of need to wiggle the headlight a little bit because we need access to this one next and this one is one of the ones where it slides up and the little tracks remove the socket from the uh, from the light so yeah basically if it's a bit stiff then you can use like a pry tool just get the pry tool in the back and lever it up and then it'll come off so tuck them in there and there we are that is the entire headlight unit removed from the car complete with the ballast and everything so that is one what i need to do next is i need to do the same thing for the uh, for the other side and then once both headlights are off we can uh, we can get them in the shed and start working on them now if i if we have a look here where the you can see here there's a line where it's crazed and where it's not this is actually where the bonnet sits so all of that is just road grime, traffic film, all that sort of stuff. Um, and where the bonnet's been covering the light, you can see it's a l in a lot better condition. It's a lot, lot cleaner. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a lot cleaner than, you know, you can see it, it's night and day, the difference. So yeah, let me, uh, let me get the uh, other side headlight off and then we'll move into the shed, get both headlights on the bench and we can look and start to pull them apart. Right then, here we are over on the bench. And what we need to do now is um, obviously we need to take the headlight apart. Uh, before we can actually start attacking the lens though, there are a few other pieces that we need to remove from the uh, headlight itself. Firstly, we need to remove this, this rubber trim here that comes all the way from here, all the way down the side to up to here where it's um, been kind of like plastic welded onto the end. But um, what we'll do is we'll just cut the ends off and that should release it. Uh, and also this piece here underneath which is held in uh, in position by a couple of uh, eight mil screws so we'll start with the screws first um, the uh, the rubber the rubber trim that's um sitting around the top here again the bit that i said was plastic welded on the side that will need to be fitted to the new lens once we fit it um, but the the stubs on the new lens are there and all we need to do is you could probably use a uh, like a soldering iron or something similar just to melt them to hold them in position again right so let's remove these bolts one two Yeah, it's held by these two screws and once these are out it's, um, it's got lugs at the front end that engage so pretty sure that's everything yep, there we go you can see the lugs four lugs there yeah, just engaging these four positions here and there you can see the ballast for the lights itself Obviously, we're getting a lot of dirt coming out because for the position it is in the car. Um, but yeah, that's um, we don't need that at the moment. So what I'll do, I will put each of those screws back into the back into where they came from so that they don't get lost. Okay. Next, what we'll do is we will have a look at getting this trim off. Okay, so. All we need to do is we need to just get these two little lugs off and I'm going to try it with my, my Stanley knife. I'm just going to cut through them. And there we are, that 
looks promising. There we go, that's one off. Fiddly. Also need to try not to damage the plastic, really, this part. Go. I think we're pretty much there. One more little bit. There we go. I think we're, I think we're good. Yeah, there we go. And there you can see now it pops off. So what we need to do is now just remove it from around the light. It is fairly delicate because it's only made of rubber, especially around this bit. It's a little bit flimsy. We just need to be careful. And then we've got these like little lugs on the top here that hold it in position. So what we need to do is just kind of bring it around them because they're, oh dear. Now that one did snap. That one did snap ever so slightly. Should be okay, it should be okay. I think we'll uh, manage. I could probably even pop a, bit, a little bit of glue on it if necessary. go okay so that one did snap they are very these are very brittle I might just pop a little bit of a little bit of glue on there just to put it together to be fair I'm not even 100% sure that it'll matter I think we'll probably get away with it when we put it back on the new light anyway uh, on the new lens so yeah what I need to do obviously put that to one side so it doesn't get any more damaged than it already is okay the trims are all out of the way next we're gonna move on to these clips now there's six of these one two three four, five, and six. And to get them off, just lever, lever them off with a screwdriver. They come off really, really easily. Now, don't be, don't be under the illusion, oops, don't be under the illusion that um, these are what hold the lens on, um, because they actually don't. They're, they're pretty much bonded by the sealant that is all the way around the lens itself. But obviously these will stop it ever coming apart. Um, and they do need to be removed to get the lens off. And there we go, that is all six of them removed. What I need to do now is go and recover my little pipe that just fell off. Uh, and then we can move on to uh, actually getting the lens off. Now, um, this is gonna be a, a bit of an epic, um, but uh, I've got a bit of a plan. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is remove the uh, the lens from the headlight. Now, did a little bit of research on this prior to uh, prior to obviously beginning this job, and it seems that the consensus is on some um, some sides of the camp people have put the uh, put the light in the oven in order to melt the sealant um, around it and then separate the two. Now, the sealant is incredibly tough stuff and it requires hell of a temperature in order to make it soft so much so that that temperature can actually cause damage to the headlight itself so I'm not going to go down that way and I have seen um, evidence on the internet of people that have actually damaged their headlight unit by doing it that method one thing I have seen is um, using a Dremel just to cut the old lens off and then what you're left with, with is just a small thin strip which can be heated with a with a heat gun um, and gently pried away with a set of pliers or something similar um, from, from the headlight unit. And that is the option that I'm going to go for because it looks a little bit more straightforward and less destructive. Um, obviously it is destructive, but less destructive to the actual headlight unit itself. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm going to go with that option and here is the Dremel. So um, all I'm going to do is, as close as I can, just all the way around the edge of the lens, all the way around here, just cut with the Dremel through the plastic, through to the inside of the light, and then the whole of this lens will, will come away. 
and then I'll just be left with the stub that's in the channel all the way around for me to deal with um, afterwards. So yeah, all I'm going to do with the uh, with the Dremel is run it run it all the way around, uh, and and yeah, that's that's pretty much straightforward, um, and, and what we're going to do. So yeah, let's uh, let's get on with it. Right, um, I'm going to wear goggles in this uh, to do this just in case I get, you know, because I, I won't be surprised if little bits of plastic fly off. And there's going to be some that end up inside the light, but what, before we assemble the new lens onto the light, I am going to take it outside and give it a blowout with some uh, some compressed air. Anyway, um, let's not stand on ceremony. Let's um, let's get on with it. So, with the Dremel running, I'm going to get it up to speed. I'm going to start cutting. Um, I do have a a little light. Bit more speed on. And there we are, we're through. And all I need to do is just carry on all the way around. Okay, so I, I am through, um, it's going okay. Uh, obviously this is gonna be a, a long laborious task. It's gonna take me a little while to go all the way around. So what I'll do, I, I will smash on with this and then I'll bring you back in when we, uh, when we get to the end uh, and we can actually split the two parts apart. There. Ah, there we go. I think we're there all the way around. Yeah, we're good. Right. Now, one thing I do need to do is gently pull the whole thing out. And at the bottom here, we've got, I'll take my goggles off so I can see better. At the bottom here, we've got some. We've got some uh, like fiber optic, these just here, fiber optic loops. The one on that side actually came off by itself. Um, they just, yeah, they just clip on here and here, and that's for the angel eyes. Um, yeah, just pop them off, and then the whole thing comes out just like so. Right, there we are. That is the lens separated from the headlight. I can see there's a few cobwebs inside here as well. Makes you wonder how they even get in, you know? Because it's completely sealed. Um, it's weird. Okay, so, two things I need to do now. One, this shroud part here needs to be separated from this part of the lens. And as you can see, it's got some little torque screws just holding it in place. Take all of those torque screws out and that whole assembly will come away from the old lens. And the next thing we need to do is we need to remove all of this piece of the lens where we haven't cut it. So what I will do, as I said before, is I will use a heat gun and then just gently, probably with a set of pliers maybe or something. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do it yet. But uh, yeah, what I need to do is obviously just get that out away from the sealant um, from the main headlight. So yeah, that's, uh, that's what we'll do next. I think I'll start with removing the shroud from the lens because that's the easy part. And then we'll move on to this afterwards. Right then, what we'll do, we'll get these screws out. Uh, I think there's five holding the shroud into the lens. There's obviously more screws than I need to remove. So I'll start removing them and see how we get on. These are T10, so they're very, very small. Three. 
before. Five. So it's like that the hole there goes onto this little lug. And there we are, that came out pretty pretty well to be fair. Um, if you look just here, you can see I've just caught the top of the shroud with the Dremel. However, you, you can't see that anyway, it's um that's all hidden. Um and, and you probably won't even see it once the uh, once the lens is over the top of it. Um obviously the, the bonnet does come down over this point. Um you can see where the bonnet comes down to because that's the clean part. <laughs> Anyway, that's uh, that's nice and um, I mean, yeah, that looks quite nice, uh, doesn't it? And obviously, be able to see that through the new through the new lens, it'll look uh, it'll look quite nice. So obviously, there's a bit of dust and rubbish in here, so that'll all need a good clean out. These are pretty delicate, I reckon. So you don't want to be leaning on these. Um, I reckon if you break them, you're uh, you're going to be in trouble because I think you'll struggle to get a replacement. If uh, if I'm being honest. So yeah, what I want to do, put this to one side, somewhere nice and uh, somewhere nice and safe, and then we can uh, we can look at that later on. But now we have the old lens completely, yeah, completely removed, and that is fit for the scrap. So that will go in the bin, and then next we'll uh, we'll move on to the headlight and get the rest of the uh, the rest of the lens removed from the uh, from around the edge. Okay, so. Here we have a heat gun, and all I'm going to do is heat around the edge, melt the sealant, or soften the sealant. Enough fat, I can then get the pliers on and just yank it away. I just do like a bit at a time, and then work all the way around the light. it's quite warm so I can see it's moving Okay, what I'm going to do is obviously continue on round doing that very same thing and then we'll bring you back once I've got it out. Right, as you can see I have got most of the way around, um, only this little section here to do. Uh, one thing I did forget um, is there's a couple of screws which need to be removed. One there and one there, just tiny little screws and you can see on the edge of the headlight uh, lens where they screw into. Um, it, was, it wasn't until I started trying to pull on it and it wasn't moving that I uh, turned it over and went oh yeah, two screws. So I um, took them out and then obviously it, uh, it helped immensely. Right, now what I, uh, what I said earlier on was I was going to go around it with the heat gun. What I've discovered is that was absolutely futile. It made absolutely no difference whatsoever to the uh, to the sealant. The method I did use um, and found it to be 100% effective is to simply go around the lens with a knife, just like so, and simply cut through the sealant. And then, see it pops out quite quite easily um, 
Yeah, both sides, just going down both sides where I can. Obviously there's a tab there, so that makes it a little bit more, more difficult, but. And then, just cutting through the sealant like so. So this is quite laborious, it takes a little while to get through it all. But get there in the end. So right behind this tab, there's a little bit of sealant that I can't quite get to. And there we go. There we are. That is it off. You can see all this sealant all the way around it, and that's what I was trying to cut through. And um, it's yeah, it's pretty. It's, it's, it feels more like rubber, and that did absolutely nothing. So don't bother wasting your time. Just basically use a knife and cut through it. What I found was to get it started, I um, grabbed a section where it still had a little bit of um, a bit of beef on it, and I put a set of mole grips on. I got down either side, cut it with a knife, and then just gave it a good yank until it came, and then just started basically to just work my way all the way around on both sides with the knife, and that technique seems to have done the job. So, there we are. Now, obviously this channel still got loads of sealant in here, and I'm gonna replace it um, when we kind of put the new, uh, new lens on. But all of this old stuff needs to be cleaned out. So, I'm gonna have to go through meticulously, just cut in, it all out until this channel is completely empty and free and clean. Give it a good clean out. And then we can start looking at getting the new lens uh, reassembled. But that's gonna take me a while. I'm not gonna bore you with that. So I'll get on with that, get it all cleaned out. And then, uh, yeah, when I bring you back, we'll look at getting it reassembled. Okay, there we are. That is the channel. All the way around the head like clear of uh, rubber. There is a little bit left in there, you know, I'm not, never gonna get it 100% immaculate, uh, but that's more than adequate, I think, for uh, for what we're trying to achieve here. Um, so yeah, that's ready to be, uh, to have new sealant put in, uh, and then obviously the lens put on. As you can see, we've got a lot of um, little bits of rubber here that have fell into the, into the inside of the headlight, which will obviously need um, coming out before we assemble it, otherwise it'll be in there forever. So I'll uh, take it outside and give it a good blast with some, some compressed air before we do that. Anyway, moving on, what I want to do next is I want to look at reassembling this to the new lens because this is very, very fragile and I'm a little bit nervous about it being uh, around the shed, um, you know, just in case it falls off something or gets trodden on or something. I just don't want it like this, uh, I'd rather it was assembled onto that lens that probably give it better protection uh, because if any of this gets broken, I think it's gonna be very, very difficult to get one of these. Um, I think you'd be looking at a whole new headlight. So yeah, that's what we'll, uh, that's what we'll do next. What I've done, I've taken my jumper off um, because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay that down and then I can put the lens on it like so without risk of scratching it. So yeah, that's what we'll do. I'll um, obviously have to take all of this cling film off and then we can look at getting that fitted in. Okay, so let's look at getting this fitted into the uh, into the lens. Now that hole there, um, it's what that stub there is for, and then obviously you've got all these little standoffs all the way around, which the uh, there's five screws here go into. So if I get that one in first, Looks like we're looks like we're in. All the screw holes are lining up nicely. There we go. Right. Let's get these screws mounted up. I've got the right size there. Yep. Yeah. 
I'm going to do, I'm going to get them all started first. And then I'll go around after and tighten them fully. There's four. And the last one. There we go. So let's tighten them all down. very gentle because I think we're actually cutting the threads in these little standoffs with the screw. I think they're like self-tapping. We'll see. I don't want to crack them. that is that installed into the lens and I think you can I think you'll agree you can already see how much better this lens is going to look compared to the one that we removed from the uh, from the light um, I'm quite pleased with the uh, the quality of these now one thing I will say is I actually got them from some Chinese firm uh, on eBay but all the numbers that are on the uh, original molds they're, they're exactly the same as everything that's on the on the old ones, they you know the the quality of fitment looks excellent. All the holes lined up for the screws. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm so far. I am very very pleased. Now I don't know how they've got the tooling. Um, I don't know whether they're using the original. I don't know. I really don't know. But these were not expensive. I think I paid somewhere in the region of around eighty to eighty five pounds for the pair. I've had them sitting around a little while. Um, but yeah, about forty, just over forty quid each for the lenses absolute bargain in my eyes and I think they're worth every penny you know what I mean I'd, I'd have probably been happy to pay double that um because they do look very very good anyway what I need to do now is I need to um do exactly what I've done here to the other light now that's probably gonna take me an hour or two so I'll uh, I'll get on with that once I've done that and got that one to the same state as this one then um we'll be in a position to whereby we can Put the lens and the headlight together um obviously once i've given it a clean out so yeah i'll uh, i'll crack on with that and i'll uh, i'll see you all shortly right so that is both headlights sorted out obviously i've only got the one here the other one is uh over, over there behind me um but they're both in the same condition now they're both like this so what we need to do now is look at getting the new lens mounted onto the uh onto the headlight obviously we've got the bracket that goes on the bottom afterwards and we've got the the little trim that goes across the top uh, of the headlight once it's all back together okay so um obviously we've we've been messing around we've got all sorts of little bits and bobs um floating around in here bits of rubbish so what I want to do is with a bit of a compressed air is just give everything a little bit of a blast out and just make sure there's nothing inside the lens because the last thing we want yeah that's good last thing we want is to get it together and find that there's something something floating around in there and then we can't get it apart again okay I reckon that'll do the job right so get them together and sealing them up 
Now I've seen loads of different ways of uh, people doing this. I've seen people using silicon sealant. I've seen people using uh, this stuff um, as well, which is uh, what I'm actually gonna use. I'll come onto that in a moment. I've seen loads of different methods. Um, the way I'm gonna do it is the way that I wanna do it. Obviously, if, it's, if you're doing this, then you know, do it however you wish. Um, what this is, is um, butyl tape. Um, it's not black, it doesn't need to be black, you don't really notice it anyway. This is, uh, I think this is either eight, it's either six mil or eight mil, I can't remember off the top of my head. I will double check um, and I'll leave a link to it in the description so you can uh, get some for yourself if you want. Um, this stuff is what they use in um, inside your door cards. In not, not every car, they certainly don't use it in the E65 as it goes, but that's just because they use a different system. Um, but a lot of cars, Inside the door card, you've got the vapour barrier, which prevents water um, going, that makes it past the seal of the window, um, going down the door and ending up inside the car. That vapour barrier is held to the door with this stuff. It's, it's sticky, but not overly sticky, if you know what I mean. It's sticky enough. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to basically lay it into that channel all the way around. And then once, once I've got a bead all the way around, simply take the lens, press it into the tape, Fit the clips, fit the two screws. Robert's your father's brother. So that's where we're gonna go. So yeah, I'll get the tape into the into the groove. Um and uh yeah, it shouldn't be shouldn't be too difficult. Um one thing I um I have seen people do is once they've got that butyl tape in, uh, the, those that have used the butyl tape, is things like put it in the oven to make it go really uh, goopy. Um I don't think there's actually any need to do that. Um, it's sticky enough as it is and what you want all you need is that this this rim of the uh, of the lens here is to basically imagine that's the butyl tape you just want that rim to you know butt into it and that'll make a nice nice tight seal uh, at the end of the day that's what it does on your vapor barriers so uh, yeah that's my that's my plan anyway so uh, yeah let's get on with it right then so I've got more than more than enough of this stuff. I've got absolutely loads of it. Um, it's not expensive. I think it's it was less than a tenner for about 12 meters of the stuff. Um, but I do actually have door cards on my E36, which I do need to put back on. Uh, hence the reason why I bought uh, as much as I did. So all I'm going to do is basically start it off. Doesn't really matter where you start it, I suppose. I'm going to start it there, just pressing it into the channel all the way around as i said i can't remember whether this is a six mil or an eight mil it looks closer to eight mil to be perfectly honest um you know with uh, judging it by eye and it's quite easy to to lay in um as i said it's sticky but it's not sticky that it's going to stick to your fingers uh, i wouldn't get it on your clothes mine because um I think once it's on fabric, it's on the fabric for good. It ain't coming out again, regardless of how you wash it. Just going all the way around. Now, let's move it over to that side. Lay it into the channel, and then what I'll do, I'll come back round and just give a little, give it a little press down make sure it's properly seated obviously at this end of the headlight you've got the two holes for the screws snap it there we go right I'll move that to one side out of the way and then all I'm going to do here is just press the two ends together so that they join now as you can see we've got it all the way around it's not quite filling the the channel so what I'm going to do is go around just 
gently press it down and that squashes it into the channel makes it fill the channel effectively all the way around top here seems a bit thinner the channel seems a bit thinner than it does at the bottom not that that's a problem um, it's perfectly fine and there we go that is it fully pressed in so there we are that is the um, that is the uh, butyl tape installed and now we are in a position to take the lens and fit it to the uh, to the headlight now here i have the clips so what i'll do first is um get the uh, get the lens on get it pressed in so that the edge is all in the tape um and then i'll get one clip at the top one clip at the bottom um, and then once they're in that's holding the lens in place and then i can fit the rest of the clips and then come back to the screws Okay, what I've done is I've gone around and just peeled the film back away from the edge just so that it doesn't get trapped in as I, um, well, that's the aim anyway, so it doesn't get trapped in as I sandwich the two together. And then all I need to do is basically place it on. Um, before I actually put the lens on though, I've got to fit the, uh, the fiber optic clips into the, uh, each of the halo rings. So we'll do that first, um, otherwise we'll forget. And it's simply a case of lining them up like that and pushing them onto the click. Dead easy. Same with the other one. So it clicks. Right, here we go. So all I need to do now is put the lens in the right place. Now you've got like this little slot here for things like that you've got a little slot there for that tab and obviously at this corner at this corner you've got the two points where the screws meet so now they're in place all i'm going to do is push the two neatly together squashing it into the tape Just like so, take the first clip, push it over the top, compress the lens. That's one clip on. They went on fairly easy. Well, it took a little bit of effort, but you know, you know what I mean. It was more than more than doable. Same here. Put the clip on, and there we go. That that is it held on. Yeah, there we go. Right, so I've got four more clips and then the two screws. You can't miss where the clips go because you've got this protrusion here and then obviously you've got the other protrusion there on the on the headlight. That's exactly where they go. If you actually look at the back of them, you can see they've got like a little like a little weird serration on the back where it actually mounts on. So just pop it on like so. Give the headlight a bit of a compress and click. And then should be another one there it is there's the other one just there there we go right now i've got my jumper here still put that down there like that and clip and then the last one is just here again just give the lens a bit of a compression into the tape and voila there we are that is all the clips in and we should have a nice watertight seal all the way around just checking all the way around i can see that the um the lip around the edge of the lens is well into the tape one thing i will point out is here just here it looks like it's not sat right 
but it was like that on the old lens. Um, yeah, I think it's just the way it's designed because it comes around here. Um, yeah, it's just the way it is. Um, it, it, that gap was there on the old one, um, so I'll point that out. Right, what I need to do next is get the two screws in at this end. Once I've done that, we can look at getting the brackets and the trim on the top of the light. Okay, as I said, I've uh, got the headlight on the uh, on the jumper just to uh, prevent scratching the lens while it's uh, down like this. Um, what I do need to do now is obviously I need to get the screws in, but I need to get them started. Now, they need to go in straight, otherwise they'll, they'll miss the hole in the lens. Um, so I'm, I'll screw it in and I should be able to feel it bite into the, there we go, I can feel it bite into the lens now because obviously as it did when I put the insert inside the lens it's cutting its own thread into the plastic and I can see it's pulling the lens, you won't be able to see it on the camera but as I'm tightening the screw, it's gone tight now. I could see that the lens was being pulled into the light. Okay, that's one. And the same up here. And again, it just it just pulled that it just pulled the lens in um, towards the uh, housing of the uh, of the headlight. Right, happy days. That is um, the lens fully installed onto the light. We've um, we've avoided having any bits in inside the light by the looks of it, which I'm obviously pleased about. Um, so yeah, what we need to do now is fit the bracket, the matting bracket on the bottom. Um, and the uh, the the, rub the plasticky rubbery trim that goes over the top. One thing that does need to go on is this little rubber piece. Um, I'm, the orientation I can't quite recall, um, but when we get this on, it will be apparent. So I put that on like so. Right. So this hose actually fits underneath this protrusion, so it'll be like so. So make sure it's orientated like that, and we'll be fine. Okay, so let's get that bracket installed onto the headlight. Okay, so here we go. This is the bracket, it goes on that way up and obviously the, the ballast for the light goes in this gap. And these four tangs here relate to these four slots and simply slot them in. And then these two um, clips here where the screws will engage with will line up with the holes for the screws. So, that's one, and that is two. Okay, now what I'll do, I'll move the film out of the way and we can bring in our little trim. Now here we've got these little protrusions. On the um, on the original headlight, these had been melted with over that. They, you know, once it's installed, they've been melted so that it stayed in position. I'm not going to melt them. What I'm going to use is a little bit of um, super glue, um, which will obviously do do the job perfectly fine. Um, what I do need to do, however, is I need to make sure that this is installed correctly and it's just a case of slotting it into position. Now when I uh, took this one apart you'll recall that it did break um, but what I've done is I've super glued it back together you can probably just about make out the uh, the joint of the glue. Make sure here goes underneath that little tam, uh, tang and then this comes round like so and goes over those two little uh, the two little protrusions then what we can do is we can take our glue and all I need to do is put a tiny dab over 
over each of those protrusions. And there we are. That is that. So yeah, all I've done, just a little bit of glue over both of them. That's going to hold that on perfectly fine. Now, we can remove the film and sit back and admire our handiwork. There we go. That looks absolutely magnificent. I am super, super happy with that. All I need to do now is exactly the same with the, um, with the other light. I think you'll agree that that, that is um, a remarkable transformation. It looks like a brand new headlight. I mean, that was, that, you know, that was the aim um, ultimately. So yeah, very, very happy with that. Well worth the money um, because like I said, these, um, these lenses were not expensive in my, well, in my opinion, they were not expensive. Can't remember the exact price. It was, it was between 80 and 90 pounds for a pair um, delivered. So uh, yeah, you know, compared to the price of one new headlight, which is circa 500 quid, I think, um, you know, the, the, it's a bargain. Obviously there's a bit of um, effort involved in actually, um, you know, doing this job, but I think when you can pick up your headlight and look at it like that, it's been worth every minute. Okay, anyway, what I need to do now, as I said, is do exactly the same uh, same task on the other, other light, get the lens all together, get it all um, buttoned up, and then we can, uh, we can get it thrown onto the, uh, onto the car. But yeah, hopefully guys, you'll agree with me that that looks absolutely stunning. What I'll do, the, uh, the lenses themselves, I will leave a link in the description for those so you can go and, uh, you can go and check them out um, for yourself. Uh, and obviously if you want to do this job, you can, um, you can buy them uh, and, uh, and give it a bash. Right, anyway, I'll get the next one done and then uh, we'll take them both out to the car and, uh, and get them installed. Right then, here we are outside uh, with, the, uh, with the light and in the, in, the, in the daylight, it looks even better than it did inside the, uh, inside the shed. Now what we need to do is we need to obviously install them to the car and we'll install it using the four eight mil screws that came out. One there, one there, one there, and one there. We've got the two connectors for the light, one just there, and the other one is just here, hanging down from the loom near the um, windscreen washer filler. And on the light, the big block one fits there, and the smaller one fits just there. This one here, ignore that for now, that's for the, that one's for the fog light, and this one, and this one are for the parking sensors. So we'll get the headlight installed, and then once that's in position, then the, uh, the headlight washer can be reinstated in here. So let's, uh, let's get it slapped back onto the car. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, get it up to the car, close as I can, and then it's a case of getting the connectors in place and that one you just slide the outer part of the connector down and it'll lock into place and this one we will install as you can see it doesn't quite reach so we'll we'll put that one on once the headlight is in in place and then what we need to do is maneuver it back into place and just like so what i'll do i'll get the two top screws in and started and then that'll stop the headlight from falling just give them a few turns now on the headlight itself you can see the mark where you can just see the the, the color difference where the uh, where the screw was installed so what i'll do i will be installing the headlight so that the washer is sitting exactly the same place and then that shouldn't affect the the aim of the lamp then i'm going to take this connector and then simply plug it in obviously you guys can't see what it is that i'm actually doing here right now but taking the connector and plugging it in and until it clicks there we go right i'll get the two screws in at the bottom one goes just there. And 
one again, just get it started. And then the other one, just here, and just next to this little block. And again, I'll get it in place. Whoops, I had to drop it. It's a little bit awkward to get into this one, because um, the, the gap for it is a bit smaller than a normal person's hand. May, may be all right for, him, for a, a small child to get a hand in here maybe, but uh, an adult, it's a little bit, a little bit cramped. And there we go. We're in and we're started. And get it in a few turns. And then struggle to get the tool out. And there we go. Right. So as I was saying, what we want to do is we want to get these tightened down, but I want to get the washers so that they sit on the original marks for the light, just for alignment purposes. And I reckon that one's good. And so is that one. So giving them a good tweak to make sure it doesn't move. And then these two can now be tightened as well. I can plug my ratchet into the back for a bit of extra leverage. That's one. And two. There we go. That is the first headlight installed. And I think you'll agree. It's looking fantastic. I am super happy with the way it's turned out. Okay, what I need to do now is a copy paste, same there, on the other side. So I'll get that, uh, that headlight installed, and then uh, we can uh, look at things like the headlight washers and then the bumper reinstallation. Okay, that is both lights installed. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to install the, uh, the headlight washers. Now what I did mention before is this little channel is what this wire runs through. So we need to make sure that the wire is going through the little channel and then line the washer up with its holes. Get these little screws, these are the T20 Torx. Get them in place. And then, oops, we can tighten them up. One. And two, okay. Same to do that side and then bumper time. Right then, time for the front bumper. So what we need to do is we obviously need to offer the bumper up, making sure that everything lines up, you know, all these bits here line up here. Uh, these obviously go up here. Um, I've got the screws here for these um, but as we do it as we install it we obviously need to pull the uh, parking sensor cables through their holes and we need to plug in the uh, fog lamps at the same time so yeah let's begin at this end and what I'm gonna do I think is lift it up I'm holding it steady with my, my knee I'm gonna plug in the fog light, and there it is, it just clicked. And then pop that round there, like so. And then each of the parking sensors I can just pull through like that. Okay, right, I need to do that on the other side as well. I don't quite give you that much cable on the fog light. Okay, so again, let's get the fog light through. Um, not the fog light, sorry, the parking sensor movement. 
And there we go, there's the other one. Just make sure everything's aligned. Again, here. And I reckon we're about there. Let's make sure that it comes around. And there we go. There, that's nice. Right, let me check this side. Make sure it all comes around and sits in where it's supposed to, in here. There we go, that's clicked in. Make sure the wheel arch liner is installed where it's supposed to go. Make sure all the plugs are out where they're supposed to be. Okay. There we go. Right, now I can install the T30 screws into the top, just like so, and it's not gonna fall out. Same over this side. Sure that everything lines up correctly, including the little clips for the screws. There we go. And then let's tighten them all down. looks like it's properly aligned. Same over this side. And there we go. Right, that is the, uh, the top of the bumper secured. I do have the screws that go in here behind the little grill. The screws that go in the wheel arch go in exactly the same place that they came out of, obviously. Um, and then we'll pop the grills back on. What I'll do, I'll get all of those screws back in because it's exactly the same um, as the way they came out, you know, just installation is reverse of removal and all that. So we'll get all of them and then I'll bring you back in and we'll get the uh, front number plate plinth installed. Right then. Bumper is fully installed. Every screw, every bolt, everything is uh, in place. Last thing is the trims. So we'll start with the lower grill just there. Push it in place. Same on this side. Just slots in until it clicks. Right, next, number plate plinth. And um, you can see we've got little slots where all of these little tanks go into so all we need to do line them up so that they are in roughly the right place and then once they're there just a little tap like so next we'll put the screws in which will keep it in place one And two. Okay, next, the uh, the trims for the parking sensors. Okay, parking sensor trims. All we need to do, quite simply, plug in each sensor until it clicks into place. Make sure it's fully home and that is secure. Okay, there we are, right. All we do now is, like we did with the number plate trim, make sure that they're fully aligned with the slots in the bumper and that this end is engaged where it needs to be. It's a little bit awkward. <clears throat> 
but it tucks in to inside and just like so. Yeah, and then each tag aligned. And then like before, give it a light whack. And there we are. That is that trim installed. All I need to do now, same with the other one, and then we can fire up the lights and look at how magnificent they are. Okay, there we are. That is everything installed, with the exception of the number plate. But what I do want to do is obviously take off all this old sticky pad uh, and put fresh on, and then I will install the number plate, but I'll do that later on. Okay. There we are, that is the, num uh, the, uh, the headlights completely installed and as you can see they look absolutely fantastic, especially compared to what we had before. What I'll do in a moment is I'll take a photograph and I'll put it together with um, the, uh, the way they were before, like a before and after, so you can see the difference. It's absolutely astonishing how much different that they look. Um, I am super delighted with, uh, with the way that they've turned out. Um, okay, all that remains now really is for me to uh, turn the lights on. So what I'll do, I'll um, have to fire up the engine in order for the lights to come on. Obviously the angel lights will come on because um, they're parking lights. But yeah, I'll start the engine and we'll get the lights on. So let's do it. Oh. Keys will of course help. And there we have the headlights and they look absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. So, so happy with that. Absolutely brilliant. It was worth all the time it took to do this. Um, you know, it was a fairly intensive job. It took a long time to achieve. Um, there's a lot of work involved in uh, splitting them apart and all that sort of stuff, but seeing how good they look now, it was worth all of that effort. Right, I'll go turn the engine off and then, uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. Okay, all that remains for me to do, obviously, is the number plate, but that is the job done. And now that they're installed and I've seen what they look like on, I am very, very happy with, uh, with the way it's turned out. Um, worth worth the effort um, without a shadow of a doubt. As I said before, I'll leave a link to the, uh, to the lenses uh, in, the, uh, in the description below, along with the, um, the uh, butyl tape, which we use to seal them up. Uh, again, I'll leave that in the description. But other than that, guys, it's all I need to say now really is uh, thank you for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you all again for the very next one. Take care, bye bye now.